Hello, receiving students and sixes. Thank you. You can take your seat. Now, in our previous lesson class, we learned about time schedules. What are time schedules? Receiving student, what are time schedules? Thank you, Helen. Uh, planned activities, events on a specific time. Specific. All right. Let's give her one big clap. All right. Time schedules are planned activities or events or things that happen on a specific time. If you say you're going to do something from 9 o'clock to 10 o'clock, that means that you are planning an activity to take place between 9 o'clock and what time? 10 o'clock. So the specific time is 9 o'clock and 10 o'clock and the scheduled event or the scheduled activity is what you are going to plan to do. If you're going to play, that is what you're going to do between that timing. All right. Now we are going to touch on a new strand which is on chance and data and we have the next um, substrand we will be looking at which is on statistics. Uh, the first topic we are going to look at on this strand and substrand is on time tally table. Is on tally table. Now receiving teacher you are to prepare a tally table about favorite subject in your class. If you have prepared that, I'd like you to paste that on the front of the blackboard again or in the center of the classroom where everyone can see. And we are going to use that as, as part of our learning activity. I would also like you to prepare a table which is placed here. The, pl the paper must indicate the name of the student in each group. Please put your students randomly in groups or together in groups and they will name each of the students in each group and each of the students will share what kind of or what subject they like out from the seven subjects. But they will choose only one which is their favorite. Now, I'd like you to choose a group leader in your group and start to write the, your favorite subject. For example, Let's start with one student from each class, receiving, from the receiving end. What is your favorite subject? Please choose a student to give the favorite subject. Let's have Michael in from this group, first group up front here. What is your favorite subject? Maths. All right, Michael's favorite subject is maths. So we will have Michael's name with the paper that they have. She will write Michael and the favorite subject that Michaeline likes out from the seven subjects is maths. So she will put maths there. Who is the next person sitting next to Michaeline? Lewis. All right, are you clear with my instruction? All right, receiving students, are you clear with that instruction? I'd like you to now write on the paper that your, te uh, that your teacher is distributing and Quickly write your favorite subject from each group member. I will give you only two minutes to complete that table. Write your name and pass. Write your name, your favorite subject, and pass to the next person.
minutes. So it's quickly, right quickly. of you. Finished? Okay. Right. Just wait. Um, bring your paper up and paste it up on the front. Are we going to present? No. We have one group finished. Second group finished. All right, good. Receiving students, as soon as you finish your um, list of names and the favorite subject against the names, I'd like you to bring your paper up to the front and paste it where everyone can see. Paste it on the board where everyone can see. And wait for the other groups. Got last 30 seconds and then you will all bring your papers up to the front.
Now, receiving students and sixties, we are going to use this tally table and complete it by collecting the information from what you have given. Receiving students, if I believe you also have yours, your favorite subjects placed on the front, you will also use that information to do a tally on the kind of favorite, sub the favorite subjects that you like in your class. Now, let's just look at what tally tables are. Now, as you can see, tally tables, tally tables or number tables is one method of collecting pieces of information. So from the information that you have given, this is information that you have given, we are going to make a tally. Now, do you know what a tally is? Or do you know how a tally mark looks like? Receiving student? Uh, anyone who has seen someone do a tally before? Would like to share with us? Yes or no? Have you seen anyone in sports do a tally? No? All right. Now, when you are trying to do a tally of any information, for example, here we are trying to work on the tally of 6E class above the favorite subject or your class, or your grade 6 class, we have to do a tally. Now, a tally mark is one stroke like that. Have you, let's say, if you have two students who love maths in the class, how many strokes will be written? Two. So two strokes will be written in that manner. If it's five strokes, how do you put the five strokes? Can someone show us, receiving student? Let's have Milika. If it was five, the number five, how do you show five students who love maths, how do you show that information using a tally mark? Is she correct? Very good. So now I know that you know what a tally mark is. Now tally mark is used because it makes it easy for the person to count the number of things he is trying to record. Because if you write the number itself, you'll, and then you see that there are probably two students, you start to rub and write the next number. And then you rub again to write if it's another figure. But when you use a, when you use strokes like that, it makes it easy for you to count easily. Are you clear with that? Are you clear with why they use tally marks? Okay, it makes it easy to collect information about something that you're trying to count. For instance, here we're looking at favorite subjects. Can I have group one to come and place the tally about that group in this table? Receiving students, I'd also like you to do that. Let's have Victoria's group to come up and just place this information to the um, class tally table. Where's Victoria? <coughs> we have the seven subjects here. Now let's look at Victoria's group. Victoria, what subject do you like? You have arts written there. Where will you put your stroke? Can you come and place it on the front? Receiving students, I'd like you to watch. So it will, all right, thank you. Can you see that? All right, can you complete for your whole group? And then you sit down, or group one.
Thank you. Let's have the next group. Anna Lolo, your group. Quickly. Next group, you get ready. Alison, get ready. You're next. Pursuing student. You have now seen the example. I'd like you to participate at the same time. While the model class is filling their table of information, you also do the same. Receiving students, you guide them as they're working on their tally table. All right, thank you, Alison. Stephanie, get ready. All right, thank you. Already. Thank you. And let's have Tyrone. Thank you. Rodney, quickly. The other one, get ready. Don't wait for me to call your name. You, Helen, you wait after Rodney, please.
Ben Michaelin. Now let's write the, we're now going to work together to get the total number from the tally or the number from, yes, the number from the tally. How many strokes are there? We have, this is one, two, three, four, five, seven. The next one we have. Let's count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Science, how many students love science? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So here we have eight. Social science, we have five, five. PD, we have Four, mile five, and four. Now we are going to confirm if we did everything correctly. Now, let's see. We've got 43 students in this class. Receiving teacher, I'd like you to find out how many students you have in the class at, the, at this present time and confirm it with the total tally. If it doesn't match the total tally, that, that means that something is wrong. Somebody has put an extra stroke or tally mark. Let's count. 7 plus 10 is 17, plus 8 is 25, plus 5 is 30, plus 4 is 34, plus 5 is 39 plus 4 is 43. So in class, we have 43 students. If you count everyone here, you have 43 students. You also count at your end. Is the tally correct? Is it correct? Yes, it is correct because it matches the total number of students. All right, thank you very much. I think you got the idea in how to collect information. Now I'd like us to move to... All right, for your exercise class, you're going to collect information about the birth month of each student in your class. What month were you born? You're going to collect that information. So receiving, uh, receiving, receiving teacher, at your end, I also want you to create another table for each group where they will write their name again and write the month they were born in. So you distribute papers to them and they will fill that in and do a similar exercise to what we have done in our learning activity. They will write down their name and month they were born in. After they write the month and month and their name, they will do a tally on the class information table, just like the example we had. So we have the birth month, we have January up to December. Then in the center, we have the tally. They will do it for the class. You do it for your class. You, you must know how many students in your class are born in this particular month. And write the number and try to match the total against the number of students at the present time, or not right now. Then you will answer this question. Which month had the most number of class students born? And how many students were delivered in the month of June? You will answer these questions once you have filled your table. This is the table that you will fill after you collect your information. Now, 
If you don't complete this exercise today, we will correct it in our next lesson when we recap on our exercise. Are you clear with that? So I'm giving you time to complete this and we will complete the table. So please you can start. Tomorrow we are cor correcting, just like how we, what we did today. Complete it now. Just a month. A month only, February only. No need for date or numbers or year or no. Just a month. Alright? Alright, I'd like you to put your virus down. Unfortunately, we have now come to the end of our lesson. So we'll just go through the summary. With that, I'd like you to complete your uh, information table for homework. And when we come for our next lesson, we will correct the exercise. Is that clear? All right, let's look at the summary for this lesson. Oops. Tally marks help gather pieces of information in an organized way. Like I said, it makes it easy for us to collect information. And we have, it is an easy way to keep track of things as you are counting to help you collect data. Collecting information is also the same as collecting data. But for now, I'd like you to understand it as collecting information, right? The key phrase for this lesson, recorded strokes on number tables. Our next lesson topic will be on types of graphs. So receiving, uh, receiving teacher, if you come across any type of graph um, that you see, I'd like you to take it to the classroom and have it on a big chart or otherwise um, have it uh, prepared so that you can show to your students um, different types of graphs. Tomorrow we will look at one type of graph and hopefully um, the, the types of graphs that I miss out in displaying, you will probably have them there. With that, sixes and receiving students, thank you very much for participating in this lesson again.